Hi friends and welcome to another fun video. In this tutorial we are going to create a parametric tension rod featured in this magazine. The process will involve two main components, the tension rod itself as a line base family and the tension rod nut using a variety of techniques. So get ready to explore geometry tools such as blend, extrusion and revolve along with incorporating nested families and advanced formulas. So here you can see the finished result. I can drag it and the rod and nut will follow. As mentioned, it is a line based family. We can also adjust the diameter and when changing the diameter, the whole tension rod is scaling up or down depending on the diameter number, including the nut, which I think is pretty cool. All right, go ahead and open up a fresh metric generic model family template to create the nut. First thing first, as I teach in my introduction to family creation, we set up the reference planes that will work as the skeleton and framework for our geometry. These reference planes will constrain and hold the geometry in place. I will add just one annotation line to make sure I place the reference planes in an approximate distance from each other to make a nut hut. A clever trick if the text and number get too large or too small is to adjust the scale to better fit the small or large text and numbers. Yeah, let's keep adding those reference planes for our nut head family. It can become a lot of reference planes and it might be a bit confusing. So let me draw up a quick sketch of the nut family with my epic pen. So both me and you can more easily see what we are creating. The first item is the blend geometry. The cone on the top is created with a revolved void. The red rectangles are woods for the rod at the bottom and the attachment to a steel plate at the top. The yellow piece is the pin and it will be a nested family. The geometry will be constrained to the reference planes. Yeah, we we'll just erase the sketch. Next phase is the brain phase. Here is where all the parameters and formulas that empower us to manipulate the dimensions are created. I do set parameters at as type parameter since it's easier to use when working with nested families. So watch my video on the difference between type and instance parameter. Additionally, I place the user defined parameters within the dimension category. It is crucial to maintain a well organized parameter system with solid naming of the parameters and organizing in the correct category. So for example, parameters in the dimension category are intended for the end user modification while parameters with formulas, for example, function in the background of the family and are not intended for the end user to change, I place in the other category. Also worth mentioning, it is possible to move the parameters up and down the list using the arrows. And I would like to place the parameters that will be most likely be most used by the end user at the top. The next step involves adding dimension lines to the reference planes. This phase is the muscle phase. So norm normally I do this phase before the brain phase, but here I will do formulas, parameters and annotations in tandem because of the complexity of the family. So these annotations carry the load, dynamically adjusting the reference planes as dimension values changes. When creating a dimension line, I link the dimension line to the correct and newly created parameter. I do this by selecting the dimension line, navigating to the top menu and choosing the relevant parameter from the label options. Repeat this process for all dimensions so we now control the reference planes with a dimension line that again is controlled by our parameters. I have connected a couple of dimension lines to our parameters. One of them is the nut height, but I have that in the other category, meaning it is not a user defined value. It will be a formula based on the diameter. In fact, none of the parameters here besides the diameter will be user defined. Every parameter in the other category will be a formula based on the diameter, making the family extremely user friendly. So the diameter will kind of work as a scaling number for the entire tension rod knot. We will continue to create annotation lines and connect them with the parameters and create the formulas. I proceed the formula creation process. So the next is the diameter top and diameter bot. This will be parameters for the blend geometry I will create later and it will be based off the user defined diameter input value. That's all done and I will add one more reference plane with a fixed distance. I check the lock when the annotation line is marked. 
this will not be parametric or it will kind of be a semi-parametric since it's connect, connected to the top reference space which is parametric with the nut height parameter so this reference space will be a constraint for a void we add a couple of reference points for the width of the bolt or pin not sure if pin is the right word but i'm going for that we add it at the top and we add a width for the void at the top of the nut we then check the equal sign to make sure the reference place space as is at an equal distance from the center line we then connect them to the parameter uh, this parameter the pin width must be calculated this calculated value will be the width of the blend geometry at a distance from the top in this case that distance will always be pin depth so we start to type in the rather lengthy formula for the pin width the width is at least the diameter but if the distance from the bot is zero but we need to calculate the percentage from the top so we add diameter top minus diameter bot multiplied with nut height minus pin depth divided with the nut height which will give the percentage from the bot so when the formula is typed in we click apply and the numeric value for the pin width is updated let's quickly illustrate what value we just wrote a formula for so the blue lines represent the blend geometry which we will create really soon then we have the pink annotation this is the calculated pin width based on the width of the blend calculated with the percentage of the nut height and pin depth so i do hope this didn't make you more confused okay well let's move on to the actual geometry and the last phase the skin and the visible part so after constructing the skeleton empowering the muscles and fine-tuning the brain we finalize the family by adding the visible element for the end user we are now in a plan using the blend tool which seamlessly merge two profiles or boundaries together in our case we have a small circle at the bottom and a large at the top that is connected to previously created parameters we then connect them to these parameters and we press ok we then go to the front view to align or constrain this blend to the top and the bot of the created reference planes once aligned the blend geometry is constrained by the reference planes with its size of the mercy by the parameters or the brain moving on to a really really fun part we are creating the cone at the top with a revolved void i will add one more reference plane this will be at a fixed distance from the parametric top reference plane and will work as a help reference plane as i call it so revolve a revolve is a form that you can create by revolving a shape around an axis so the axis will be the, the center line we lock it and move on to the form we uh, create this in the front view as a profile with a closed loop we just draw up the lines here and start aligning and locking it to the reference plane you know it is also possible to align the end point on a line as i'm doing right here next is the curved line that will be attached to the aligned end points the curve radius is approximately something like that we hit ok and we check it out in the 3d view that is one beautiful geometry so we go ahead and change the parameter values to check if everything works as intended this operation is called flexing and i would recommend doing it regularly when developing a complex family so we don't end up at the end with a highly advanced family that don't work that's going to be a nightmare to find the errors let's move on with um, the void at the bottom we mirror the bot void to the top and start aligning and locking it personally i prefer to position these elements adjacent to the reference planes rather than directly on top of them this approach offers i think better control when aligning the geometry to the reference planes because later on you see the geometry being locked to a reference planes we go back to the 3d view 
and do some minor flexing just to see how it works. Seems pretty good. Let's start a new family. This will be just a simple bolt or pin that will be placed at the top. It will be a nested component, so a family in a family. A major benefit of using nested component, it acts as one single unit, making it easier to control and it also, in our case the best part, provides access to the center line of the object. So we can align the center of our nested family with the reference planes in the hosted family, which is a key feature. Creating this straightforward family is a familiar process, hence I won't delve into the specifics. Essentially, it involves extruding a circle where the diameter of the circle is tied to a parameter. The extrusion length corresponds to the pin width, which was previously determined using a complex formula. Currently, we will simply incorporate the length parameter and establish its connection to the pin width upon loading it into the host family. However, there is one crucial step and sure to check the work plane based box. This is necessary as we intend to position this family on a pre-selected work plane in the host family. We load it into the host family and drag the family out. When we drag it out, we need to check place on work plane so we can place it on a work plane that is positioned in the center of this family. You can now see the power of nested families as this pin acts as one single unit and it's easy to align to reference planes. As of now, the parameters created in the nested family are not accessible to the end user if we load it into the main Revit project. So we connect the nested parameters to the host parameters. I do see I forgot to add the material parameter to the pin. Let's quickly open up the pin family and add just that. We load it back into the hosted family and connect the material parameter in the host family to the material parameter in the nested family. So all done. When changing parameters value for pin width and diameter, the nested component will adjust. Let's do a little bit of flexing to check if this family still works as intended. We're just changing the diameter uh, to 12 and 8. Yeah, seems like this works uh, just as we want to. So let's add uh, a constraint for the void. This will hold the void in place and expand or shrink with the diameter value. Just setting up those uh, annotation line, connect it and writing up the formula for the width of the void. And then align the void to the reference plane. Let's briefly examine the tension rod nut. In the middle of the nut, it is a kind of a break. This will be the finishing touch on the nut. I will add it with a parametric model line. Back to Revit, we go into the brain and add the formula for the diameter. This is the same principle explained earlier, so we just copied that formula. Since we want it to be just the outside of the blend, I add 0.3 millimeters. Okay, so let's just change the pin depth to hole depth and removing the nut height and I should get the desired numeric value. We go to a plan view and select the model line tool, place out a circle and add a dimension that I can connect to the newly formulated parameter diameter break. And there you have it, it's connected. We go to the front view, we mark the model line and edit the work plane it's connected to. We then go to a 3D view, change the scale and see the model line. Yeah, model line is placed exactly where we want it and it is visible and parametric. I do notice a small error. The pot void should not be a rectangular cutting through the geometry, but rather a circle extrusion making room for the rod. Let's quickly fix that. And we are back on track. Next up is creating the tension rod. I mean, start up a new line based family. Since it's line based, it will make it easier to adjust the tension rod. So we load in the nut family. Make sure the work plane based box is checked before loading it in. 
we are now in the host tension rod family and need to set up two user defined parameters diameter and material so these parameters will the end user have access to and can be able to change you press ok apply and yes now we just do a little bit of cleanup closing down a couple of windows next we are setting up two reference plane these will constrain the rod itself also we need to add a parameter to control it basically we want the rod to go inside the nut family but not too far so i constrain it with an easy formula by based on the diameter i will just call it help rod and the formula will be diameter multiplied with 8 which is the nut height minus 10 we press apply and ok and we uh, yeah, change the diameter value and we connect it to our two annotations there you go change the scale perfect now finally we are actually going to create the rod itself we open up an elevation view the left one we set the work plane to uh, left we draw out a circle for an extrusion and add annotation and connect that annotation to the diameter parameter we change the scaling as usual and go to the plan view and constrain the rod to the created reference planes just like that lock it perfect though so back to the left view we place out the nut family by just dragging it from the project browser and open up the appropriate view to constrain it the front view should do the job now let's open it no not that one yeah front view here you go so we constrain it to the edge where the nut family will be mirror it and constrain it to the other side as well yeah there we go it's easy to constrain since this is a nested component as we talked about earlier in this video we proceed by connecting the nested parameters with the host family parameters this is an important step without it the parameters in the host family will not be accessible to the end user in the main uh, revit project okay so we are standing in the 3d view we need to align the nut family in plan view finally done let's check it out in the 3d view it looks pretty neat if you ask me and we go ahead and load this bad boy into the main project and test it out so we are standing in the main project 3d view we find our tension rod put on the wor correct work plane yes that's grid b and drag the tension rod from the project browser and just uh, select place on work plane and you just drag it out just like that okay oops that is rotated the wrong way let's open up the family again and just rotate the nut head real quickly 90 degrees both of them and 90 degrees yes and we again load it back into the project overriding the existing view and yes now it looks exactly what we wanted it to look and we just drag it onto the steel plate so it matches let's mark uh, let's mark tension rod and change the diameter to flex it just to see if this uh, flexes with it uh, once again let's change that and oh perfect just absolutely beautiful and that's conclude this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it please like it and subscribe for more amazing videos thank you for uh, watching